So you asked, uh, you asked the big question, and, and I'll start by observing uh, that it, it's, it, it's really interesting and I think fitting that this discussion of, um, of, of Ukraine, what's going on there is being uh, hosted by, um, by the Jewish Democrats, uh, an organization that I might on, on you know, any other day be talking about another country around the world that we care about, which is Israel. And um, you know, the history of our relationship with Israel is in part uh, all about uh, helping a struggling new democracy that is um, that 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 has had its right to exist as a nation threatened. Um, and so much of our conversation about Israel is about, you know, just asserting that it has a right to exist. And that's what's going on here. This is a fight about a country's right to exist as a sovereign, peaceful, democratic, and independent nation. The story, I guess, begins most recently with, with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Um, Ukraine, among other um, former republics of the Soviet Union asserted its national identity, declared independence, and very importantly, the, the Russian Federation recognized its independence. Um, in 1994, there was an agreement, a very unique and important agreement, uh, in which Ukraine, which had inherited nuclear weapons from the former Soviet Union, because the Soviets had based their nuclear, some of their nuclear arsenal on Ukrainian territory, um, Ukraine agreed to give those nuclear weapons up, send them back to Russia in exchange for Russia promising to respect Ukraine's uh, independence and territorial integrity, um, certainly not to attack Ukraine or to lop off parts of the country uh, to be part of Russia. And in the years since, Ukraine has struggled to um, maintain a democracy. It's struggled against corruption. It's had good leaders. It's had bad leaders. But progressively over time, the Ukrainian people have developed a stronger and stronger national identity and um, expressed a stronger and stronger desire to be part of Europe, to be part of the European Union, to be part of the NATO alliance, and American policy has been to welcome them, to have an open door, um, to say that you, like any other independent sovereign country, should have a right to choose your alliances and associations. And um, if you want to um, fight corruption and become a democracy, we'll help you. You don't have to make those choices, but you should be free to do so. Um, meanwhile, Russia has moved in the opposite direction from the moment of hope in the early 1990s, when Russia was having free and fair competitive elections, it has become a, an authoritarian dictatorship ruled by one man, an increasingly paranoid, um, and I fear unstable man, Vladimir Putin for the last 22 years. And he looks at Ukraine and sees it as a threat. Why is Ukraine a threat to him? Not because it is threatening to invade Russia or attack Russia, simply because it exists as an example of a free and independent and democratic country in what he considers to be his sphere of influence, but moving to the West. He worries that Ukraine's example will give his own people bad ideas, bad from his point of view, that maybe they can do the same thing. Maybe they can overthrow a corrupt and an autocratic ruler someday and live more normal, free and prosperous lives. And so for years now, he's been complaining about this. He's been, he's been saying that um, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union, its breakup into these independent parts was a historical tragedy. Uh, he seems to feel like it's his personal destiny to reverse it. And particularly with Ukraine, he has emphasized that it's not a real country. It doesn't really have a right to exist. And that's what this crisis, manufactured entirely by Putin, is about. Now, why should it matter to us? It's a little country. It's far away. My constituents here in New Jersey 
don't feel like what happens in Ukraine affects them every single day. But it matters to us because ever since World War II, ever since that horrible conflict, it's been the policy of the United States, and rightly so, to try to prevent dictators from changing borders with tanks, to prevent countries from swallowing up smaller countries just because they can, from saying, hey, you got a nice country there, you know, maybe I can take it from you, because that's a recipe for worldwide war and instability, the kinds of wars that would absolutely come back and hurt America, just like World War II did. So we're not being asked to send troops to fight in Ukraine, but we are being asked to support Ukraine's independence, to help them help themselves, and to make sure that Russia pays a very big economic price for this invasion.